Welcome to my channel. Hope everybody's having a great Sunday. I uh, wanted to go over a couple things as far as the cryptocurrency and the perspective um, of things. And I think things have been changing uh, since the you know beginning of 2018 where we had this huge rise in Bitcoin and all the altcoins. And now they've just pretty much gone down to the start. 217 billion, I believe, 216 billion today. Um, but you know, looking at it overall on a yearly basis, um, we're kind of not rising as fast as we should have this year based on historical uh, data. Um, so it may be looking like we're going to be in a bearish market for the next year or two. Um, and we'll get more into that as far as the mentality perspectives of what's going on here and you know I, I really gotta have to say that mainstreaming has a lot to do with it um we're not getting the mainstream as quickly as possible and of course on a trading point of view um if you're new into cryptocurrency or any type of market trading markets this may be a really really negative effect in your brain um to say you know cryptocurrency is dangerous even though it's not, it's not going anywhere. We all know this is not going anywhere, um, whether it's blockchain or the cryptocurrency itself. Um, but when, you know, you have, you know, 12 months, you know, at least eight months at the moment of just bad market and everything going down, everybody's trying to make money and then offset by pouring more money into it. And then it goes down even more. It, it's not a good feeling for, every, for people to stay in the market. So they're going to get in and then they're going to get out and they don't really believe in the market. Um, is this going to be another cyclical retail uh, spike that we're going to have at the end of the year, like November, December, January? You know, again, that's really hard to say. I mean, there are there are a lot more retailers, you know, coming about and there's going to be a lot of extra money around the, around that time. So let's hope. But, you know, if this FUD keeps going, you know, the world is not going to see it as a good market. Um, even though cryptocurrency itself and blockchain are, are, are things that big businesses and all businesses will eventually adopt, the adoption is, is going to be slower than we all hoped, um, at least in my mind. You know, uh, it's not going to take just a year for us to be making uh, dramatic gains, which hopefully it does. But, you know, based on the manipulation of the market, you know, the non-regulations, um, it's just too volatile and it's just too dangerous for big money to come in as far as investors and traders to come in. ETFs, um, Wall Street, uh, you know, things like that, you know, retirement funds and so on. They're always going to put a retirement fund and add cryptocurrency to it if it, if it keeps, you know, keeps them in the red on a yearly basis, even in the first year. The first year is obviously key. Um, if you can't hold people in after the first year by them making any type of gain, um, that's, you know, an addition to whatever they're doing, you know, their retirement fund, their investment portfolio, whatever it is, they're not going to stay in. And that's just, that's just the human aspect of, of the market. You know, obviously we all believe in the technology. We all know that technology is, uh, for the most part, more sound than the banks are. Um, but there's more accountability to the person. So there's a lot of mainstreaming. Um, that needs to be, uh, you know, to quicken it, a lot of these things need to be fixed. You know, regulations, uh, ETFs, uh, manipulation, uh, getting rid of, you know, coins that don't do anything um, and, and things like that. So, you know, let's get right into it. Okay, so just moving right in the market here. Um, uh, coin market cap, it's going sideways right now, 216 billion. So um, doesn't look like very, you know, a lot of red, a lot of green today, you know, really mixed, but not much going on. Um, so getting right into the cryptocurrency news here. Um, like I was saying, you know, um, there is some perspectives that we really need to learn as, as investors. I mean, I've, I've learned this through the stock market after years um, in you know the first I would say year and a half 
was just uh, a very, very, lear- you know, big learning experience for me. And then after that, I was, I was, I was smooth sailing for the most part um, in, in the stock market uh, without having to risk as much. Now, in the, in the cryptocurrency market, you know, as investors, you know, again, I, and this is what this, you know, CNBC News article kind of went over is after the Bitcoin boom, hard lessons for cryptocurrency investors and uh, Nathaniel Popper and Su Hyun Lee. Uh, these guys are actually um, uh, pretty good journalists, actually, and they, they get uh, some good um, uh, references and, and good people that they actually interview. So. Uh, basically what they're saying in this is, is that investors as investors, we're like, we're going to be learning a hard lesson this year as cryptocurrency investors. Um, for example here, you know, uh, he basically was saying that one of his friends, uh, invested $23,000 in the beginning of the year, which was, you know, when everything was really high. Um, I believe is when Bitcoin was at like 12,000 or something like that. He, he bought in. And uh, tokens uh, worth about four of them. So he's cleared about what happened. So now he, he went from 23000 down to $4,000 in his, you know, a basket of coins. And basically what he says is that I got too caught up in the fear of missing out and trying to make a quick buck. The losses have pretty much left me financially ruined. I mean, this guy obviously put more money than he was, should have been, you know, than he should have been gambling with. And, uh, and, and he lost and, and he basically just, you know, cashed out and he's going away. And with that mentality now, he has a mentality of cryptocurrency is dangerous. It's not good for you. So in this, uh, the virtual currency markets have been through booms and busts before and recovered to boom again. But this bust could have a more lasting impact on the technology's adoption because of the sheer number of ordinary people who invested in digital tokens over the last year and who are likely to associate cryptocurrencies with financial ruin for a very long time. So, you know, they got into cryptocurrency and anybody who's interested and talks to them about it, they're going to have something negative to say about it. Um, it's, it's not good morale is basically what I'm saying. And it's going to be hard to mainstream when morality is low for a whole year, an entire year after a huge boom saying it's at 20,000 Bitcoin and our market cap's up to eight hundred billion, and it just dwindled. I mean, not just halfway, but a down seventy five percent, and that's it, it, that's crazy. Um, when you're looking at markets, and big money's going to look at that and go, "No freaking way!" Uh, unless they see some light at the end of the tunnel. We all see it. We know the technology's not going anywhere. We understand blockchain and the way things work, but the average person just does not get it they just don't get bitcoin really you know or or cryptocurrency or blockchain or any of it they just look at it like it's money because we call it currency and it's not currency so that's kind of the uh miss you know come convoluted that we're getting and and they're going mainstream um let's see so it, it is hard to know how many cryptocurrency investors are now in the red with holdings worth less than the money they put in Many who have lost money in recent months have gotten in the markets before the big run up last year and their holdings are still worth more than their initial investments. So kind of looking at the other side of the coin here, you know, so to speak, they're saying, you know, yeah, this guy lost a lot of money, 23,000 all the way down to 4,000. But that's because he got in at the wrong time. And these people who got in before the big boom of 2018, 2017, their coins are still worth a little more than, than their initial investments. So um, you know, it, it's, to, you know, it's to each their own really, you know, when it comes to that, but really just want to look at it from a perspective point of view that if you are going to take huge losses like this and then dip out it, it fine, but you know, you understand the technology, you understand cryptocurrency, you understand it's not going anywhere. Try not to say bad things about the space. That's really what it comes down to. Um, if you believe in it, or if you are just in it for the money, of course, you're going to have negative things to say about it because you didn't make any money. Um, and that speaks, you know, volumes for a lot of people. So, uh, this is about, uh, this guy, let me see if I can stop this real quick. Well, this guy, um, Charlie Shrem, he was a Bitcoin advocate and, uh, he's basically saying, um, you, how long you should hold your crypto for. And he's saying about five years. And if you don't say, uh, you see a significant change in your, uh, investment holdings, crypto investments, 
um, then get out at that point, but, you know, really stay in for five years. Um, and it was actually a really interesting, um, uh, this video right here was actually really interesting because it, it talked about it. And he has actually, he went to jail um, because he sold some Bitcoin. Uh, he was co-founder of BitInstant back in 2011. And in 2014, he was arrested because of apparently money laundering. He knew, uh, he, he sold some Bitcoin to somebody knowingly that they were going to buy, use that Bitcoin on the, you know, uh, the black market, or the Silk Road is what they call it, I guess. Purchase of drugs off the Silk Road, uh, which is the dark web. And he knew about it. So he went to jail for two years. So, and of course, when he, you know, watch this art, you know, watch this uh, 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 little interview on Yahoo Finance. I found, I found it here. Uh, it was interesting because he's very transparent about everything he did. I didn't agree with everything, but almost everything, about 80%, 90% of what he said, I, I agreed with. Um, but he was talking about ETFs and how ETFs are not going to be coming in, which I agree. They're not going to be coming in. He thinks 2019, I think 2020. The way things are working and the SEC and, 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 the, and the CFTC and everybody's got to get their shit together and level this playing field. If we don't, and an ETF gets rolled out and, and it, it, it doesn't work, it's going to be a long time before we see another ETF coming down the road and it's going to be approved. A long time. So we might as well get it right the first time coming out the gate. And that just takes regulation at this point um, from the SEC to come in and, and somehow you know, level the playing field somehow. Uh, if they got to make another department you know, strictly for cryptocurrency, which they say they have, but they need to have probably two. Um, just based on blockchain and cryptocurrency. Uh, so it was an interesting video to watch. And uh, it's interesting that he was basically saying that, you know, it is kind of more like the stock market in that way. It's comparable that you want to hold it for long term. You, you know, you're not going to make 100 percent, 200 percent gains in a year or two. If we do great, that means, you know, mainstreaming is catching hold faster than we expected. But my expectations for mainstreaming, not until 2020 is when everybody's going to start getting it. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I, I look at things all the time and I watch things and, you know, I'm into magic and I watch these videos in magic. And this guy was going around with an actual Bitcoin, a cold storage coin, Bitcoin, um, which I'm giving away when I get 100 random subscribers. When I get 100 subscribers to this channel, I'm going to give a, a cold storage coin away. And he was showing people that this is a Bitcoin. And, and the look on their people's faces was like, oh, that's a Bitcoin. Well, I mean, just that right there coming from young people, it tells you, you know, t tells you volumes. It, it's telling you they have no idea what cryptocurrency is. They think cryptocurrency is a currency and that you should be able to hold it in your hand. So this guy's walking around with the Bitcoin and he's doing magic with a coin, just like any other coin. But because he's doing it with the Bitcoin, everybody's going, oh, well, that's what a Bitcoin looks like. Well, and so that's where we're at in mainstreaming. So if that kind of makes sense to everybody that it's not mainstreaming as quickly as, as we want it to, um, to the masses, to, to everyone, um, the layman person, you know, just the average person out there walking around. Uh, they, they know what Bitcoin, they've heard of Bitcoin. They have no idea what the platform is all about, blockchain, cryptocurrency in general. So I mean, with that being said, let's segue right into this cryptocurrency. The definition of cryptocurrency is a digital currency built with cryptographic protocols that make transactions secure and difficult to fake. So basically what the banks are doing, they, they, they secure your transaction and sign it with cryptographic protocols. Um, it, it now does it automatically for you when you actually make the transaction. So there's no waiting for your money. Um, and the most important feature of a cryptocurrency is that it's not controlled by a central authority. The decentralized nature of blockchain makes cryptocurrency theoretically immune to the old ways of government control and interference. Theoretically. Now, mind you, it's theoretical, and I will get into that because there are ways that they are, the old ways of government are finding ways to control and interfere. Uh, cryptocurrencies make it easier to conduct any transactions. For transfers are simplified through use of public and private keys for security and privacy purposes. These transfers can be done with minimal processing fees, allowing users to avoid the steep fees charged by traditional financial institutions. Same thing, um, you know, securing it uh, and transacting it and signing it and making sure that it gets there. All those fees are pretty much none. Uh, however, the latest news on cryptocurrencies indicates that because cryptocurrencies are devoid of a central repository, 
A digital cryptocurrency balance can be wiped out by a computer crash, a hack, and other unexpected events, and no, and you can't get your money back. Can't call somebody up to tell you, hey, I want my money, my money is not, I can't see it on the net. Um, so, or, you know, in my wallet, so on and so forth. So, that right there is way too much for the mainstream, you know, average person to really understand unless they take time out of their life to understand what this cryptocurrency is. And because our market isn't doing good, that's the first thing that they're going to look at and go, oh, no, that's horrible. It's not making any money in, in, as an exchange. Why would I even get into it? That's just, the you know, that that's the average person if you're looking at it. Um, coming into the market so it's it, it's to, to to the person just looking in it's a lot of risk and it, this year you can't really argue that it's a lot of risk you, you mean you really can't uh oh what's going on here I'm getting uh I'm getting jacked here well moving on so Bank of America oh my goodness I don't know how I lost all this Bank of America, okay? So Bank of America wants in, is interested in cryptocurrency storage patent, okay? I mentioned this in other videos that the banks are, are doing patents. That is how they are gaining control, okay? It was basically what I was uh, saying up here, government control and the interference, okay? Um, the old ways of government control and interference and banks are a part of the government if you don't know. Big banking is part of the economy which is therefore ran by the government, um, and big banking is part of the government, the big, big banks. Uh, so with that being said, Bank of America wants to get in and own the patent for cryptocurrency storage. So anybody who wants to do cryptocurrency storage has to go through them for the patent, has to pay them. They want their money. They, it's as simple as that. Everybody wants a piece of the pie, and they can, they're going to try and do it. They have big money to wait it out and figure out how they can leverage all this stuff against you know uh, a new source of income which is cryptocurrency and they are absolutely doing that and they are actually it, it's working for them um so another thing i want to touch on is taxes you know what i mean capital gains on you know, on cryptocurrency uh it's a problem it is a problem like i was saying banks want their cut well so does the irs they don't understand how the shit even works for the most part i've gotten calls i have a business and I had gotten calls to kind of a, a know your customer thing from banks because I have obviously bank accounts and credit cards. And um, I've gotten calls from the IRS uh, wanting to know your customer for some reason. And they, they asked me questions about fiat. They didn't understand. They didn't even know what fiat was. I had to explain to them what fiat was. Um, so it t that tells me where, where the mainstreaming is. They want their cake. They want their cut. It's as simple as that. They don't understand what's going on, but they understand money's being moved around and somebody's making a profit. Where's our money? And that's it. But they don't understand anything about the cryptocurrency platform when it comes to the worker who works uh, for the IRS or for the banks. Just the, you know, just the, uh, you know the lowly teller or person on the phone. So it, it's it's just really interesting to see. But like I said, you get really everybody has to look at really the perspective as an investor um, and uh, as a uh, uh, the layman person coming in trying to figure out is this a good market for me to be in is this the next big thing that's going to come out and you know uh, take the place of money you know the actual fiat currency of your country so it, the, the mainstreaming is really difficult we all get it once you once we learn how cryptocurrency works and how blockchain works we're all say genius but getting to where we understood it all took time, and that time is taking a lot longer than I expected, than you know, than I think a lot of people expected. And now that we're having problems with manipulation and ETFs and so on and so forth, it's just going to get worse. So, um, you know, like I said, this Charlie Shrem uh, video uh, was actually really good. He works for Crypto.IQs now, which is like a fear and greed uh, AI bot um, that you know uh, platform website that they use. And, um, you know, he really does. They, they really do go over a lot of things. And, you know, he, again, he wasn't right about everything, at least in my opinion. But for the most part, he was right about a lot of things um, when it comes to ETF, uh, possibly holding on to your cryptos for a long, long time. Um, you know, I wouldn't say long, long, but five years, you know, at the most. And then reevaluate from there. 
Um, but to sell out right now and take a loss and then have to pay all your taxes on whatever coins you've moved from coin to coin, um, and that's kind of what this is kind of saying, um, is how do I calculate my cryptocurrency gains, okay? So it's just like anything. You bought it for this much, it goes up. You sold it for this much, this is how much you, you spent plus the transaction fee. So that's how much you pay tax, <coughs> excuse me, pay taxes on. And then the coin to coin trades. You gotta watch the coin to coin trades. Okay, it doesn't matter if you have, a, 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 basically right here it says, let's say you have $100 worth of Bitcoin, uh, including transaction and brokerage. Okay, that $100 currently buys 0 0.01 Bitcoin. Two months later, you buy, you, you sell, you trade your Bitcoin, that 0.1, for 0.16 Ethereum. So how would you calculate that? Well, if you bought it for 100 and then sold it for 160 to get that 0.16 Ethereum, that's $60. You just made 60 bucks on that. That's how it works. That's, I mean, it's crazy because if, even if Ethereum goes down, you just lost a shitload of money. Doesn't matter. Until you turn it back into another coin, or another fiat, you're still gonna get capital gain 60 bucks on that. So the point is, if you're gonna buy $100 worth of Bitcoin, hold it, just hold it. You know, and if you have expectations of a 2X, 3X, just hold it for another year or two. It's not gonna get any worse than it is now, I'll tell you that, it's only gonna go up, but it just depends on how dramatically on a year to year basis it goes up. It's only gone up 50 billion since the, you know, the high last, or I'm sorry, the. The high of last year before the boom. So basically at the end of 2017, sometime around, I believe, September, October, it was at 150 billion. Um, and then it just, you know, spiked up from there. And now we're at 215 billion. So, you know, we'll see how much it spikes up and then recorrects and then stays uh, before hopefully another retail boom uh, around Christmas time. So, um, but that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, that, that's basically essentially how it goes. Uh, fundamentally. Now, uh, crypto bots have a big, big thing on there. And, and this is the reason why I have uh, trading, the, I'm sorry, not trading, the coin market, coin tracking, coin tracking. Look down in the uh, comments uh, in, in the description and I have coin tracking on there. And, and then what that really does is that spits out everything I need for the IRS, this form, this 8949 and the 1040 Schedule D. It already, it spits it out for me at the end of the year. Um, and gives you 200 free trades and then you have to start buying the service but I mean it's better than owing money and if you got to spend you know 100 bucks to get this which I don't think it's that much I'm just saying you know if you have to buy um, the coin tracking to uh, um, you know track your coin your crypto bots and all your your trades for you so you don't have to do it yourself I mean it's it is great I use coin tracking and I don't have to do any of it it does it for me I just any uh, exchange I use, it automatically uploads to there. Any wallet that I use, automatically uploads to there. So it, wor it works great for me. Um, but you know, think about that. Taxes, okay? Taxes, big thing, okay? Um, and banks coming in, cold storage coins, um, patents for banks, and um, uh, mainstreaming. You know, that's really the big thing. And of course, the, our perspective of investors. So last but not least, crypto fear and greed index. It is at a 19 today. Yesterday was at 22, last week at 26. Makes sense. Um, you know, Bitcoin's just kind of hanging around that area and went down a little bit. So, and this index is for the most part based on Bitcoin. So, uh, you guys have a great day. My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below, and you guys have a great Sunday. Keep up the grind.